Hi, this is Gail. Back to follow up with you uh, regarding the dyeing of embossed papers. So what I wondered after I showed you the coffee dye paper is, okay, what if the tea dyeing didn't work because the tea solution wasn't strong enough? So I added more tea bags and I went back and I tried it again. Now, this was from the first time with the tea. I mean, the embossing is there. You can see it and everything, but um, it's just tea dyed paper. That's all. It doesn't really emphasize the embossing. So now I'm going to show you what this second batch looked like. In all honesty, it looks lighter, and I left it in for just as much time. So I'm not sure why that happened. The background of the newer batch, you'll notice it has tiny, if you can see well, it does have little tiny, tiny like squares on it, and that's from the pan that it was in. Um, but at any rate, really doesn't emphasize the embossing anymore. It's there, looks fine, but yeah. So see how light that one is? This one is a little bit darker, although I'm not sure you can see that in this lighting. And in all honesty, doesn't really emphasize the embossing any more or less than the last one. And that pretty much was my conclusion. Yet another sheet, the embossing's there. It's pretty, but not like overly emphasized. Another sheet, a little bit darker tea dyeing it appears, uh, but again, nothing spectacular to write home about. So I guess the tea dyeing just isn't going to overemphasize the embossing. It's there, but doesn't really enhance it a whole lot. I just have tea dyed paper with some embossing on it and that's cool. It's just not as emphasized as I would hope it would have been. Okay, so while I was doing the tea dyeing, I thought, okay, well, let's uh, tea dye these little numbers that uh, Andrea, Andrea Allen from Artie Mays uh, gave as a freebie. And what she did, and what I did the first time I made them, and let me show you them, is that I took my, yeah, where is it? My ink, and um, this is the one I use, remember, the archival ink, the sepia, or sepia, whichever you prefer. And I rubbed it with one of my brushes. Here it is, right here over the whole little number, lightly, just slightly to give it some color. And that's how, that's how they turned out. Bring them up and you can see. Then what I did, still on the sheet, mind you, is that I took my glossy accents, whoops, and here that is, and I uh, spread it out over top let it sit for overnight, and then came back today and cut them out. They turned out really well. I mean, they're not perfect, you know, but um, some of them must have had a little air bubble or two in them. I'm not too precious about that, you know, big deal. Um, they look really cute, and after watching Andrea's latest video with those beautiful cards, and tags that she made. Oh yeah, I'm all about giving those a whirl. I don't know about you, but if you haven't seen that video, you better take a look. It uses Tim Holtz people and they are the most adorable tags I've seen in a long time. Okay, so here's what the sheet looks like. This is on my laser jet. So tea dyeing this is no issue. Okay, so I did go through and I thought, well, if I tea dye them, then I won't have to go through and distress. And you can see, well, maybe you can't, but I can in person. They really turned out the perfect color. 
Let me go over here. Whoops, there we go. Okay, and this is the sheet, the freebie from Andrea, but Tracy Fox, who has been collaborating with Andrea a lot on that. Um, they created the Nature's Remedy kits together. She also put out a freebie, and I just tie-dyed, not tie-dyed, oh my goodness, tea-dyed these. Now, I have not yet had a chance to put the enamel on these, and I shall. Now, these are just done on uh, regular printer paper. The ones I did yesterday, I did on a little heavier weight paper. It's a cardstock. Anyhow, so you can see the tea dyeing, which I don't know, maybe you can't see as well here, but the tea dyeing, I really like the coloration from the tea dyeing. To me, that's like the perfect color. Um, and this is how it looked when I printed it out. This is the cardstock, the color of the cardstock, sort of a cream color that I originally uh, printed the ones on yesterday. And then I still went ahead and distressed them a little bit. So I think the tea dyeing is perfect. And uh, I'll have to try tea dyeing this paper next. But anyhow, just that I give you a comparison, check this out. This is coffee dyeing. So if you want them a little grungier and a little darker, let me turn them around. You can compare. Coffee dyeing always. And this is just quick in and out of the bath of coffee and then right outside in the sun. Interesting, huh? And again, it's got those little tiny squares because I used the other pan that had those on it, but no biggie. So anyhow, there's that. Now, next thing I wanted to follow up with you about is doing some printing on these lovelies, okay? These are those napkins that you get if you go to Burger King or McDonald's or whatever. And I had a request to show you just what I do to print. Now, I have not tried printing these on my laser jet. The reason being, my laser jet seems really sensitive to any kind of different paper. When I tried to print this off yesterday evening, I tried three times and it jammed three times. So I asked my son and had him come in and look at it. Naturally, Mr. Computer Programmer puts it in, prints the first time, no issues. He just has to look at the thing and it's scared, I guess. I don't know. But when I do it, I always have issues. So it just doesn't seem to like different papers so well, no matter what I do to adjust. So I'm sticking with my inkjet for the napkins. So. Let me show you what I do. First, let me show you some results. Okay, now, again, this was with my inkjet. Did not realize that my inkjet was starting to run out of black ink, but I thought it looked a little, that this picture looked a little funky. And I don't know if you can read it. It is hysterical to me. It says, I don't pretend to be something I'm not. Well, normal. Sometimes I pretend to be normal. I just thought that was hysterical, and I'm going to use that on a tag at some point. Um, but uh, I just thought I'd print that out for you to take a look at so you can see the quality that you get. It just makes things look more vintage, in my opinion. Okay, these were a set of Mrs. Cog's photos, and this is where I really began to see, oh yeah, I'm running out of black ink. You can see over in here and here that it's lost its color somewhat. But pretty good quality still, considering it's a napkin, and the napkin has texture to it as well. Then I did, this is from the Graphics Fairy. I'm working on an architectural uh, journal for fun. And these are just line drawings, and I think they turned out really well. So that was pretty cool. Then these are also from Graphics Fairy. Uh, obviously you can tell a little darker in coloration and they turned out great. This was after I fixed my, uh, replaced my cartridge in the inkjet. And then this is when these had a little bit of color. Look how sharp those images are on this. I mean, can't, can't beat that at all. And again, 
that's just with the inkjet. So pretty cool. I'm going to show you in a minute what I use them for. This one, this adorable little boy, is he not precious or what? This is going to go in a journal I'm working on right now, and I will show you uh, how I'm using that. And then these also, this was from a page I've already inserted the rest of those. And then there's this one. So, okay, so you get the idea. And uh, let me show you how to do it first, and then I'll show you my samples. This is like super easy. All I need now is, and here I have it, I need a piece of paper to glue to. Notice it's just a scrap piece of paper. I'm going to glue up here. And this is just to not mess up my blue paper that's underneath. Okay, so first of all, my glue stick. I If you have something that one of those spray bottles of, you know, temporary glue, that's great too. Really don't have to do a whole lot. I just go along the top and I go along the bottom. You don't really want it to adhere real well, just long enough to get it printed and call it good enough. Now, I did, you see, all of those copies yesterday, and it started jamming up on the last one. So, it does happen, even with the inkjet. Okay, so now, I don't care about the wrinkles, because when I go to glue these down in the journal or on tags, they are going to flatten out anyhow, so it's not a biggie to me. If you want to, you could iron them if you're so desire. Not going to do that. Okay, so I'm just going along, making sure it's adhered there, here, a little bit on the sides, and the bottom. By the way, if both of my printers are HP printers. Uh, <laughs> my my uh, inkjet is really old, and when you hear it running, you're going to go, oh my god, it sounds like it's going to fall apart. Um, sometimes it sounds really bad. Other times sounds fine. I don't know why. I've looked. I can't see anything loose or any issues with it. Maybe it needs to be cleaned or something, but, you know, it was a real inexpensive one I purchased at Walmart. And, um, also, I didn't know that it was running out of black ink because the program doesn't like the fact that I don't use specific HP uh, cartridges for it. I have been using, um, yeah, oh, there are ones, there are no brand ones online. I get them really cheap and I get XL, so it lasts a lot longer. Okay, with my camera set up currently, you aren't going to be able to see me put this in my printer. Now, with my printer, I put it in, this is face up, it goes in and comes out face up, okay? I know some others you have to do the other way. Um, that's how I print mine. So, while I'm busy putting that in, let me just put this out here for you to look at. And I'll be right back. My printer is right down underneath where I'm filming. So, it's a little bit cramped. So, going in the printer, okie dokie, so sorry if you're seeing my head, or any other body parts you don't want to see, okay, here we go, now let me print real quickly, and you will see just how it does, okay, I always go fit to frame, because I really don't think you want things printed right on the edge. I think that could create some issues as well. So I click off the fit to frame is what I mean to say. Okay. Alrighty, I'm printing. Let's see how it goes. This could be scary. That's all I'm saying. Okay, so in the meantime, let me show you what I've been doing. This is actually 
It's been gessoed. Well, actually, I didn't have gesso upstairs, um, so I just used a little bit of white paint and watered it down and did this. And this is one of the napkins, and I've put some gold. And I just tear around the napkin. Oops, I'm sending to the wrong printer. It would help if I would send it to the correct one. One moment, please. I'll be uh, right back. Gracious sakes, I don't know about me. Okay, that went to my laser jet because I hadn't switched it over. Gonna do that right now before I forget. Never ceases to amaze me how I can mess things up when I'm filming. Okay, let's try that again. I have clicked pick fit picture to frame so it will go off of that and it shrinks it down to make it fit better on the napkin. And let's see, now it'll be noisier. I'm going to guarantee it. It will be noisier. Okay, so let me tell you the story behind this. This is a cover that I got from Annalie from Annalie's Journaling, I believe is the name of it. And um, she it's just the cover that I got from her. And this was hanging up here. Took this off. These are Christmas journals. This is uh, felted. Really pretty. Um, and fun. Okay. So this is the front cover. And this is the back cover. Okay. And um, she's used a little bit of, of gold here. You can see she just gessoed it. These are pictures that she's put on and gessoed, etc. Okay. So, and in the back, there's a cute little lace pocket. And, um... Let's see. Then there's another little picture, some gesso around the picture, a little bit of gold. And inside, I'm going to let you look at this because hmm, some issue with my printer. So let me do that real quick. I knew it would happen. Okay, we'll do this. You can look at that while I figure out what's going on. I don't get it. Whoopsie. Oops, I get it now. Okay, now it's printing. Okay, yeah, you can tell it sounds terrible. <laughs> oh, and it's jammed. Or it stopped okay well anyhow oh it's gonna print this is some old fabric some lace and again she did the gesso and then a picture and this was some of the ephemera that came with it really cool notice it was printed on um, actually it's decoupaged onto a piece of music paper with some gold etc and then also came with a little package of buttons and this ephemera. And I have some cheesecloth that's dyed a little pink that's going to flow down here and whatever. And I have to make her not so bright because this journal just isn't a bright journal. Some doilies, another cute picture, lovely tag, I think that's on wallpaper. Isn't that cute? And this cute, cute little boy. And her papers, her book papers, dictionary papers, they are ancient. I mean, we don't have stuff that old here in the states by any means okay look at this little girl 
another tag. Lovely pink, I'm guessing avocado dyed, but you know, she does all her own dyeing of everything. She uh, is really into eco dyeing and um, her stuff is just gorgeous. Same way with all of her laces and trim, she eco dyes. She's in Sweden. And so she will also sometimes take you outside with her dog on walks in the woods, etc. Once they were ice fishing her and her, her uh, boyfriend or fiance. And then some more little goodies inside the envelope. Looks like some stamping and some gold. And another old book page with some stamping and some gold and just aged yumminess on the front of that. Okay. So anyhow, those are some of the goodies that came with it. If you have not checked out her website, you definitely need to. She's on YouTube. She makes all kinds of wonderful videos showing her technique and processes. Now, what I did then was that was all I got was the cover. This part wasn't in it. I had found this handmade paper. Um, they called it stationary. And the outside packet is made of this. And I saved that. I'll do something else with it. So I thought, okay, I'm going to make these the pages because they really match what she had done so far. So I uh, went to put them in, but the way, the size of them and such, I had to, before I could sew them in, I had to use some, this is just a tea dyed or coffee dyed, I think it's coffee dyed muslin. So I used those strips as part of the binding and used a, a pamphlet stitch and put them in with some wax thread. And then on the outside tied, I did them different and left the strings on the outside and tied two of the buttons that she had given with them. So what I've done is trying to be similar to what she's doing. I'm going to use this as a, a Christmas dailies journal. And so I didn't want gesso on every page, but I may end up gessoing more pages. But just to start out, I have one gessoed and one of those prints. I think that's this is where that little boy is going to go uh, that I printed off. And then the others, I have pages laid out. Uh, I'll tear around and glue that down. I've gone ahead and put um, the gilding around the edges, the gold. This one, I'll tear around some more and that'll go up here. I might actually print that off a little bit bigger uh, to fill up more of the page. It's just very apropos for Christmas, the 25 days, you know, leading up to it. There's another picture that's going to go over here. Okay, so you'll see all I did, as I did with this page, is after I gessoed, I took the pictures, tore around them from the napkin, glued them on with a glue stick, I might add, and then put a little bit of gold around, gessoed kind of up and around the edges like she had done on hers. I was trying to mimic her style, and as I get busy, uh, working on this, I will try to even do her collaging in clusters like she does. You know, nobody's going to do it exactly like another person, but in her style anyhow. But I just like this old guy. The Santa. Or whatever you may call him in your country. These are angels. There we go. There you can see what they are and that there's some gold there. Okay, so anyhow, that's where I'm headed. That's what I've done with the um, napkins. I've done other things, but okay, why didn't that print on my paper? Okay, so here's what happened. Mm, came out on a separate sheet of paper instead of on this one. Like I said, whenever you get ready to film, there are issues. I'm going to leave this here for you to look at while I go around and try to put this through one more time. Trust me, it does work. 
why it's not working now is, you know, mystery to me, but hey, that's life. Oh, goodness gracious. Murphy's Law. Murphy's Law for sure. Okay. Let's see what we can do. Put it back in. All the way down. Make sure the printing door is open. And we'll give it another whirl. And if it doesn't work this time, we'll just have to say, you have to trust me, it does work. Just doesn't want to cooperate right now. <laughs> oh, goodness gracious. Always the way of it. Okay. Third time's a charm, maybe? Don't know. How's everybody out there today? It's beautiful. Right now here it was very gloomy and overcast, but it's looking pretty good right now. And it's not nearly as hot as it was yesterday. Quite hot and humid in the upper 80s. Um, it was like 91 the day before here. So, okay, let's see what happens, okay? So, now you know where I'm headed with that. Okay, doesn't wanna, okay, another click and we should be getting ready. And let's listen to the printer. Oh yes, we have success. Excellent. I just thought while we were listening to the printer, I would show you. I did buy a journal from Anali in my beautiful favorite lavender color. And um, yes, uh, perhaps in another video I will show you. Okay, here we have it, success. Turned out really nice on this uh, brown paper. These are my prints. So you can see it looks really antique -y. And when you glue it down, and I'm sure if you decoupage it, um, it will look just as antique -y, uh, when you put it on any other kind of paper. If you want to use Mod Podge or something shiny, uh, sometimes that even blends it in even more. I just tend to like using the glue stick. So, um, yeah, but that's, uh, so you can see there we, there we have it. Works great. Great technique and fun. Okay. Maybe while we have it out, let me just go ahead and show you real quick. Okay. And I'll put her link below because I guarantee you will want to go check it out. Um, handmade. This is just gorgeous lavender color. It may not show up that well on film, but let me tell you, cute little pocket here out of lace, which again, as I said, she hand dyes. I won't go through this, but this has all kinds of goodies in it as well. This is the most adorable little girl. This is embossed. I mean, her little lace clusters. Just, she does an awesome job, awesome. And when you get ephemera from her, you, you are guaranteed it is old ephemera, really old. Okay, and you can see her clusters. She just does the most awesome job with them. Love her stuff. Little envelope and tuck here. Oh yeah, it's one of these I'd forgotten. It opens out, you know, how they do so you can write inside. Now, let me get that back. But notice that there's some washi. This is really old book paper. Some washi, some lace. Looks like some dyed cheesecloth. And of course, you know, the trims. 
just stunning. Everything is stunning that she makes. Here, I'll bring this up close. Look at that cluster. The stenciling, the printing. I just, I love her work. Just adore it. And she is the sweetest lady. Her little dog, Nico, is so cute. I'll try not to take too much time because I know this isn't what we initially went on to do, but once I get talking about her, I mean, I just have to share her, her wonderful work. And cute pockets. And look at this. This is just lusciousness, I'm telling you. Beautiful. I felt so blessed to be able to purchase one of her pieces of work. Doesn't have a year, but it's definitely old. But look at that. Look at all the layers to that. The cluster, so many layers. She likes to do, it looks like the gold flo foiling. I, it just, this looks like clouds to me, the way she's done that paper. Just a stunning, exquisite journal. Some more lace. Really old cabinet card, it would appear. When I say really old, like 1700s age, you know, 1800s. Really old. <laughs> oh, there's another picture. Oh yeah, this is one of those that opens out embossed. Looks like a little Cupid here. This says 1850. Oh, and this is another one of her neat neat finds i'm not gonna try right now yeah there we go got it these feathers with the curlicues on the end never seen anything like these anyplace else but Annalie has them The coloration of these is just exquisite. It's down here, just love all those colors. Let's see if that has a year on it. No, no year. Keep hoping. <laughs> Again, she dyes all of her trims. This is such a pretty lavender color. Is that ever cool? This one I know opens out as well. Just beautiful. I am telling you, you want to head over there and check it out. When she gets her journals in, they usually go pretty quickly. She also will sell batches of her uh, very old papers, too, from time to time. So, I'm just saying, head on over there and check her out. Thanks for stopping by and listening to me explain about printing on the napkins. Oh, and by the way, then I just peel this off. Usually it comes off without a hitch, 
sometimes you might have a little tearing but i mean if you are cautious it won't matter especially most of the time the printing isn't that close to the edge of the paper so it wouldn't matter even if it does tear a little bit i feel like this one wants to tear but anyhow so there you have it okay so it works really well and thank you for stopping by thank you for listening thank you for subscribing i am so ecstatic about my recent increase in subbies i do it for you guys i love sharing what i do i don't really feel like i do anything different than anybody else does but hey i'm willing to show you what i do and i love doing it and you make it fun you make it all worthwhile and so i will be having a giveaway soon as i get the project done so be watching and waiting for that it's my way of giving back and saying thank you for being here and um, i do appreciate you please stay safe and stay healthy bye go out and create something